The minimum occurs when t equals minus x dot y divided by norm of y squared. Now we use this result to derive one of the most important inequalities in mathematics. Theorem, Cauchy-Schwarz inequality. For any two vectors x and y in Rn, the absolute value of x dot y is less than or equal to the norm of x times norm of y. To prove this, we are going to use the fact that the norm of x plus ty squared is always non-negative and plug in the minimising t from the previous lemma. The rest is just expanding, isolating the dot product term and square rooting both sides of an inequality. Proof. Since a square of a number is always non-negative, the norm of x plus ty squared is greater than or equal to zero. From the proof of the lemma, we already know the left-hand side is the same as the norm of y squared t squared plus 2x dot yt plus norm of x squared. This is true for all t. So plug in a particular t, namely the t where tx plus y is closest to the origin. Assume for now the norm of y is non-zero and hence this fraction is defined. Then our inequality becomes x dot y squared over norm of y squared minus 2x dot y squared over norm of y squared plus norm of x squared is greater than or equal to zero. Multiplying both sides by norm of y squared and moving terms to the other side, we get the norm of y squared, norm of x squared is greater than or equal to x dot y squared. Finally, take the square root of both sides to get our desired inequality. The absolute value of x dot y is less than or equal to norm of x times norm of y. Are we done now? No. To quote Professor Simon, There's a slight fly in the ointment. Or in the words of our resident wizard, Math Mantra! Don't forget to check Degenerate Cases! We assumed in our proof that y had a non-zero norm when we defined t. Assume for now the norm of y is non-zero. But it is indeed possible for norm of y to equal zero. Namely, by the zero property. We know that this happens when and only when y is the zero vector. Luckily though, the proof is trivial when y is zero since x dot y is zero and norm of x times norm of y is zero. Hence, cauchy schwartz trivially holds as zero is less than or equal to zero. Now we're done. Remarkably, we just used a completely different problem, a geometric one 
to prove the Cauchy Swartz inequality. That's pretty cool. And because this is so awesome, I'll talk more about this proof technique at the end of the lecture. Before we move on, take note of two steps in this proof. First, we took the square of a norm. This trick is so important that it is worth immortalizing as a mantra. Math mantra. When dealing with norms, it is often easier to work with their squares. One advantage is that when we square a norm, we can expand it as a dot product. This allows us to exploit dot product properties. Secondly, we took the square root of a square. Near the end of the proof, we calculated the square root of x dot y squared as the absolute value of x dot y. Note the absolute value sign. Generally, the square root of a squared is absolute value of a. It is incorrect to write square root of a squared is a. Just consider negative one squared. The square root of negative one squared is one, not negative one. <laughs> 